Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine. This was sent to me by Thames and Cosmos, and is designed by Thomas Singh. In this card game, you need to complete 50 different missions as you travel across the solar system, but you will only succeed if you can work together as a team. To master the challenges and achieve your mission, communication will be essential, but in space, things can be more challenging than expected. Let me show you how to play. So The Crew is a cooperative mission-based trick-taking game. You win together or you lose together. Uh, and only if each of you is successful will you be able to complete the missions and win the game. There are 50 different missions in this log book here with uh, different unique win conditions. You can play through them consecutively uh, as a cohesive story. Uh, you can also play them out of order if you want, but they're all inside that log book. Then you deal out all the cards to each player, and then you play tricks. If you're not familiar with how trick-taking works, in a trick-taking game, uh, if you play a card of a certain suit, like in this case a blue card, then the other players have to play the same suit if they are able to match it. In a case like this, where somebody starts with a blue six, blue three, blue four, highest number wins the trick. If you are not able to follow suit because you don't have a color of that card, you can play any card. In this case, you could play a green nine, but in this case, the original suit's winner, our highest number, wins. So this card would still win, even though this is a higher number. You always gotta follow suit as if you have a suit of that color. There are five different suits, pink, yellow, green, blue, and rocket. Rockets are trump cards. So a trump card works is let's say somebody starts with blue, play nine, somebody plays a, tr a rocket card because they have no blue cards. Trump cards, regardless of the value, always win the trick. So that player would win. Uh, if there are two different trump cards in play, higher number wins, as usual. Now in this game, it's very important for the right players to win the right tricks. And, in a, and one rule in the game is you can't talk about the cards in your hand, but you are able to use these radio communication tokens in order to give information uh, to your fellow uh, players. Each player has one of these tokens which can only be used once per turn. So if you want to communicate, you can take one of your cards, let's say uh, this blue nine, and put it on the table. Uh, and then, this card is still technically in your hand, it is just out there for uh, show for the rest of the players to see. Then, you can take this token. If this card is the highest card of your color of this color in your hand, which it probably is because it's a blue nine, this goes on the top of the card, okay? If it is the only card of your color, it goes on the middle. And if it is the lowest card of your color, which actually could technically be true if it's the only one, that would just be, mis uh, you could put it there. You can't use these with rocket cards. Uh, and also these can't be moved, uh, even if the statement is no longer correct. Like let's say after a certain point, this is the only card of your color. You cannot move this after you've placed it on the table. Whenever you use one of these radio communication tokens and place one of your cards on the table, you take a moon card, or whatever this is called, a reminder card, and you put it in your hand to take the place of it, to remind yourself that this is still technically in your hand and can be played. Now, trick down the trick taking is very simple if you are familiar with trick taking, but let's go over the missions. Um, Whoever has the four rocket card, because there's one, there's four of them, is the commander for the current mission, uh, and they receive the commander token as a reminder. There's this distress token thing you can use to make it easier. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think you need this, but it's in the rules if you wanna go over it. I'm not gonna explain it, because I don't think it's necessary. I think the game is totally doable without it. Now if you look here, the symbols will tell you in the mission guide how to set up a mission. So this blue card symbol here means you need three task cards, okay? And the task tokens will tell you um, in what order tricks need to be taken, like so. So what this means is that this card needs to be won first, um, then this card, then this card. And what happens is each of you takes a turn to choose one of these cards. Let's say the commander goes, okay, I'm gonna take this one. That means the commander has to be the, has to first uh, win this particular card uh, during the game. Then let's say player two goes, okay, I'm gonna take this one. And player three takes this one. So now we know the order 
of which player needs to take what. The commander needs to win the pink three first. Then after that, player three needs to win the pink seven first. And finally, this player needs to win the blue seven. That is the order of events. If it ever happens where let's say this player uh, wins a pink seven before he wins a pink three, you already lose. Or let's say that this player, uh, this player won the blue seven in their trick. That means this player can't complete their task. So that's done too. Otherwise, all you're doing is playing tricks. So you know the order of events you have to do. Let's say player, the commander starts with a pink nine. This player plays a pink six. Aha, uh -huh, we know the commander needs pink three. So player three plays the pink three and the commander wins the trick. That means his task is completed. Congratulations. Whenever you win a trick, that player starts the new trick and you just keep playing tricks and hope that you can complete your tasks in the correct order. If you ever mess up, you just gotta start over. Now, I don't wanna spoil too much about what's inside this log book, but um, uh, there are some very interesting missions in here. Like for example, there might be a mission where one player is not allowed to win any tricks or um, some, some things can affect your communication, uh, like a dead zone, which will um, prevent you from do, or will have restricted communication. A lot of different twists on the trick taking sort of formula. Um, but it's all relatively, you know, easy to grasp if you are, you know, a trick-taking fan. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. You, uh, set up the mission, divide out the tasks, and play tricks, and hope that you can complete them in the correct fashion. And that's the game. So this is a game I've been very excited to play, and it did not disappoint. I am a huge trick-taking game fan, and the co-op play here is very clever and very satisfying. It's hard to put down once you start going. You go, okay... Oh, wait, we messed up. Let's do it again. Or, oh, hey, we let, let's go to the next mission, next mission. Since the rounds are so quick, you're always eager to try again, even if you fail. This game offers the same sort of pressure and cooperation intensity that something like Hanabi and the Mind does, but I appreciate that there's a lot more within your control. The limited communication you have is really useful. Uh, the whole, I have this, this card's my highest card, this card's my, old, my only card. It's implemented in an elegant, easy to understand way. Uh, the sheer variety of missions is very entertaining, and I didn't want to go into too many of them because I think that's part of the fun in this in this sort of campaign or you know story mission based game. Uh, but I admire that the game can do a lot without piling on too many extra unnecessary mechanics. Uh, it does a very good job of uh, slowly easing you in with. You know, okay, this one's a little more complicated. Let's add this concept and this concept. Uh, if you're a trick-taking game fan, it's going to be uh, a walk in the park. But if you're not familiar with this genre, um, those first missions are good at sort of um, preparing you for what's coming. I would recommend this easily to pretty much anyone unless you absolutely despise trick-taking games. But for those of you with good taste, uh, easy must-buy. Really, really fun. Uh... In fact, I want to play more just talking about it. So good.